Look, I'm a Canadian and I am so exhausted with politics right now. It is crazy. And look, I'm not even one of those guys that say, hey, don't pay attention to politics. Just preach the gospel. We don't need to even pay attention to politics. Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. Just preach the gospel. That's all we need. I'm not even one of the guys that says that because I think politics is important because they reflect actual world views uh, from people and and we're called to represent the the actual christian worldview in the realm of politics to represent justice mercy all that stuff and make sure that the government's doing what god has assigned it to do i get it right but now i'm just talking to you on like a, a personal emotional mental spiritual level where i'm like i'm just exhausted from not only hearing about the united states election but look i used to be so big into politics and i still am really interested in it now right but uh, as kind of a teenager i was so hyped about it right and you get so excited about who your guy was or 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 seeing if he got elected and the policies and everything behind it i'm not saying that's not important but what i'm saying is that my mindset as I was approaching that was like placing my hope for the future uh, of myself and, and the people around me in these people, right? In them enacting and doing the things that I want them to do. But I want you to step back for a second and just, just take a look. I, I realize like there are key things that are very important. The pro-life issue, standing up for life, right? There are a lot of things that are really important and I'm not minimizing those things. But what I'm saying is that so often we can put our whole emotional well-being into what happens on the TV because in actuality look in the grand scheme of things your life isn't changing that much right and I understand look there are important issues that are important that we need to stand up for that we need to fight for I get it I get it but what I'm saying is is that our hope is not in a particular politician to bring restoration to America or Canada that's not that's not what's going to happen that's not what even that's all God has said he's gonna say hey well, I'm gonna rise up a politician that's gonna fix everything no he says all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me to Jesus Jesus has all authority and what does he call us to do to make disciples so we're not called to to make you know uh, fans of celebrities to make uh, you know converts for Trump or for Biden or for whoever. That's not what our, our mission is, right? We're calling people to the gospel. And what does the gospel mean, right? When people say, "Oh, preach the gospel," that kind of thing, it, it, it sometimes is like one fat, like one facet of it, right? But when I'm talking about preach the gospel, I'm talking about a all in con consuming reorienting just like bomb to people's lives when when you get hit by the gospel bomb okay every aspect of your life should change should orient around this new thing this new way of life this new world view that then has outflowing into how you vote into how you see government and how you see family and how you see church all that is affected but it begins at the disciple making level because look we're really good about arguing about things that we're passionate about in terms of politics and coming up with really good arguments and strategies and convincing people that this is the way it should be but we're not good at actually making disciples about um engaging people with the with the truth of jesus that then is going to transform the way they see the world because we're trying to get people to believe certain things that are not consistent with their particular worldview we need to begin at the core of their worldview which is the way they see themselves the way they see god the way they see goodness right People think they're good people, generally, right? People say, ah, I'm a good person, right? But when you look at the Bible, the Bible says that no one is good, no one, no not one, no one seeks for God, no one does what is right, right? The only person that is good, the only good one is God. So we need to look for him for our standard of goodness. But until pe people's hearts are transformed, they're never going to look to God for that standard of goodness. And if nobody looks to God for the standard of goodness... For his law then look our politics are going to be screwed and we're, we're we're investing our emotional energy in the fact that look yes people are are doing things that we don't necessarily like all the time or sometimes 
you know, like, but we're investing so much emotional energy in these things into this, you know, reality TV show on TV that that doesn't necessarily have a lot of impact on your practical everyday life. I realize they're important things. I'm not saying those things aren't important. They are. But what I'm saying is for you right now to take a second to just let go of whatever it is, whoever you were supporting, whoever like, and I'm not just talking about this election. I'm talking about every election, right? There's so much anxiety and, and just, oh my goodness, it's insane, right? Just let go for a second. Just let go. Just let go. And then where do we begin? We begin in our homes with our family, with our friends, with the people around us, making disciples, cultural reform from the inside out. Let me make something clear. There are a lot of issues that I think are really important. And I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again, just so you, you're really clear with what I'm saying. The issue of abortion, the issue, issue of marriage, right? The issue of just like identity in terms of men being men and women being women and all that kind of stuff, right? and just the role of the government in general, those are important things, extremely important things. And those should be reflected in, in terms of the way that we approach politics, like the, the way that we're, we're gonna vote and we're gonna you know, call leaders to biblical um, foundations and laws, right? But for me, I can't change the world um, just with, with whatever, you know, like I can't, I can't just do, I can't do everything all the time. I can't just go out there and fix everybody's perspective on all this, right? But I can begin with the one person in my life who I'm having a conversation with every week, right? That's where we begin. I just think the next year with the whole coronavirus thing, with the election stuff in the United States getting sorted out, with all just the disruption that is happening, I think in the next year, it's just going to be so important that we're all on the same page as this, that we're, we're disciple makers, that through that, then we, we develop biblical worldviews and that affects the way we approach government, church, family. That's the outflowing of it. That's the order. Let's get it. Let's do it. I'm tired of politics. Doesn't mean they're not important but let's focus on making disciples where we are. That is our primary calling. And the outflowing of that is culture change. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.